Question. What makes this design look like hot garbage while this version looks so much more appealing? How can the exact same drawing look so bad one way and look so good another way just by making minor changes? Here's the thing, the colors you choose can make or break your design. Understanding color theory and color harmony is the key to making art that looks good. Just so happens, that's the topic of today's video. So if you wanna learn how to pick the right colors for your work every time, keep watching. So you've probably heard about color theory or color harmony. You might have even looked up articles or videos about it online. And chances are you either got super bored or super confused about how to actually use anything that you saw. That's why I'm taking a different approach with this video. I'm not gonna go into the history of the color wheel or explain the differences between primary and secondary and tertiary colors. To be honest, I'm gonna take most of those common terms and explanations and throw them out the window to keep this as easy as possible to understand by showing you real world examples and how I use them. To explain all this, I'll be using the Procreate app on the iPad to kind of help you visualize what the heck I'm talking about. And if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm a huge fan of Procreate, but to be honest, Procreate has some great features that are gonna help you pick and choose the right color. As you watch too, keep in mind, I'm also using RGB color profiles for everything you see in this video. All right, so now that we're in Procreate, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the color panel up here. And then down at the bottom, I'm gonna hop over to the classic view of the color panel because this is the layout for a lot of other art programs too. So if you're a digital artist, you can follow along no matter what app or program that you're using. And the first slider we're gonna talk about is up here at the top. This is the hue slider and it picks your color. So if you're used to sticking with the disc view here, the hue slider is the same thing as this outer hue ring right here. So moving this ring around here does the exact same thing as the slider right here. Moving down then, we have the saturation slider, which controls the intensity of your color. So as you can see up here, this drags our color selection from left to right. Sliding it to the left is going to desaturate the color and it's going to soften up that hue. And then moving it all the way to the right is going to give us the most saturated version of our color. One thing to remember here is that colors with max saturation are going to be super bold and aggressive and you're not going to want to use them all the time. Finally, we have the brightness slider down here, which adjusts how light or how dark your color is. So as you can see, sliding this to the left and right moves that color selector up here from top to bottom. Using those two sliders together, the saturation and the brightness slider, that's gonna allow us to fine tune and get the exact color that we want. Color temperature plays a super important role in choosing the right color to start out with. I'm sure you're all well aware there are warm colors and there are cool colors. Generally speaking, reds, oranges, and yellows are warm colors while blues, greens, and violets are cool. Now, color temperature can be a lot more complicated than this simple illustration, but just a reminder, I'm keeping this video simple so everyone can understand. So the key here to remember is color temperature can affect the mood and the depth of your illustration. Warm colors, they really make us think of things like heat or sunlight, and they're stimulating, while cool colors are more relaxing, they're more calming, and they remind us of water, sky, or grass. Warm colors stand out more, they come to the front of a design, while cool colors tend to recede. This is a great way to give depth to your illustrations by using warm colors in the foreground and then cool colors for the background. You can create a lot of contrast in your designs by playing warm and cool colors off of each other. Another important thing to think about when picking colors is the symbolism and emotions behind the colors. Certain colors make people think or feel different things, which can be used to your advantage as an artist that's trying to communicate with your audience. Red is associated with fire, love, danger, or violence. Orange can be associated with creativity, autumn, or movement. Yellow is associated with happiness or cheerfulness. Green can represent nature or growth or wealth. Blue is associated with peace, calmness, or even sadness at times. 
Violet is associated with prestige, imagination, or romance. And then we have neutral colors like black and white. Black is often associated with rebellion and power or elegance or death, while white is associated with purity, virtue, and peace. So don't get me wrong, understanding the colors and the qualities is great and all, but that only gets us so far. What we really need to know is how do we use the colors together in our designs? That's the most important thing, and that's where color harmony comes in. The first color harmony we're going to cover is monochromatic. So monochromatic color schemes are made up of different tints, shades, and tones of the same hue. Monochromatic color schemes are very simple and cohesive, but they can be very powerful too. So to illustrate this, let's take a look at this Edgar Allan Poe illustration that I did. So when I do a monochromatic color scheme like this, I try to use four colors, but of course you could use more, you could use less. But the main thing I do to begin with, to start out, is I begin by finding my base color. So let me go ahead and turn off all this. And I usually use the disk view to find my base color. So I'll slide the hue ring around here. And then I just try to get close to what I want for my base color. Once I've come kind of close then, I'll open up the classic view. And the key here is I want to have the saturation slider and the brightness slider right on top of each other. So those are totally lined up there. And that's going to be my base color. So let me go ahead then and just pop up the base color here. So now that I've got the base color selected, the next thing I want to do is I want to pick a tint for my lightest color. Tints are going to be achieved by moving the hue closer to white with our saturation slider. So with my base color still selected here, I'm going to come back up here to the color panel with classic view enabled here. And I'm going to slide this to the left closer to that white. So the saturation slider moves to the left while the brightness slider is going to move up here to the top and to the right. So that's going to work as my tint. That's going to work as my highlights. Now that I've got that shows, I'm going to go ahead and open it up there so you can see those two sitting next to each other. Now that I've got that selected, I want to select a shade for my darkest color next. So shades are made by moving the hue closer to black. So once again, here coming back to my colors panel, I'm going to select my base color and I'm going to go ahead and move this brightness here down towards black. So moving this to the left and then I'm going to move my saturation all the way over here to the right until I decide that looks good. So that's going to be my shade. That's going to be my darkest color. So we'll go ahead and open this up so we can see we've got three of the four colors selected. And finally here, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and choose a shadow or accent color. So once again, I want to choose my main color here, my base color, come back up here to the classic view. And then I want to go ahead and increase the saturation while dropping the brightness until I get something that I'm happy with. And that's going to be the color for our shadows and accents. So opening that up, you can see what we're left with. So now that I've got all my colors selected, we can really see how these tie into each other and it's going to explain even more how I just selected those colors. So let me go ahead and select my brightest color here. I'm going to come up to the classic view again. And as I shuffle through each of these colors, make sure that you pay attention not only to where the color sits up here on the color picker, but watch the saturation and the brightness sliders here. As I move here from left to right, you'll see the color up here drops kind of diagonally and the saturation slider moves to the right. The brightness slider moves to the left with each color. Once again, diagonally here, saturation to the right, brightness to the left until we get to the last color, 
which is fully saturated and is further here to the left. So you can see how those kind of stair step down at that angle until we're left with our last color. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how everything is pieced together on the canvas. So let me turn this off and we're left with everything here. So what I want to do here is let's go ahead and turn, let's just do everything off. I'm going to start here with my darkest color, my shade. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and move on to the base color, which kind of fills everything in. Move this off to the side so we can see all the pieces here. And then from here, let's go ahead and add in those highlights. So that's going to be our brightest color. And then finally, we can add in our shadows and our accent colors here. And then let's go ahead and add in the rest of the background here. So as you can see here with the background, the majority of it, I went with that tint, that lightest color that's our highlights. And the reason I did that is because all of the outlines here and the majority of what's going to touch that background is our dark color. Choosing that tint gives us the absolute most contrast between the background and the foreground. And that really makes the whole design pop. And then from there, of course, with the frame, just kind of alternated colors there to tie everything in together with that monochromatic color scheme. So you can do this with any hue and any color temperature. This is obviously using a cool color, but the same thing can be done with warm colors too, which gives a totally different feeling to the design. The next color harmony is complementary. So complimentary is honestly the one I use the most here on my YouTube channel. My main character design is the base color, and then I use a complementary color for the background. Complementary colors create the most contrast and make each other appear brighter. Now, I didn't talk about this with monochromatic because Procreate doesn't have an assist function for that, but for the rest of these color harmonies, you can actually select the harmony tab in your colors panel up here to have Procreate pick the right colors for each color scheme based on the first color you choose. And that's the key with picking colors for color harmony. Always pick your main dominant color first. Your remaining colors are gonna all be based off that first color you choose. With color harmony selected down here then, we have all of our different options up here for the color harmonies, starting with complementary. So let's take a look at this devil design, a warm bright red for the character itself. That's the color I started out with. I decided what I wanted my main dominant color to be. So we'll go ahead and select the color there of the devil and then pulling up our color panel and under harmony here with complementary selected, you can see right across the color wheel is our kind of blue green that works as that background. With complementary colors, you're always going to have one warm and one cool. So in this case, obviously the devil is the warm color. The blue green background is the cool color. This whale is another example using a cool color for the main character. That's our dominant color. So if we go ahead and select that, then we come up here to the color panel. And once again, you're going to see our complementary color right across from our base color there. We've got the blue of the whale, kind of that peachish color for the background. And once again, colors are opposite on the color wheel and they're equidistant from the edge of the wheel and then also equidistant from the center of the disc. Like I said, complementary colors give you a ton of contrast and they're super easy to do. Similar to this is split complementary. So split complementary schemes use a base color and then two secondary colors placed symmetrically on the color wheel. In split complementary, the three selected colors form a narrow triangle. What this does is it gives you one warm color and then two cool colors or vice versa. You're going to have one cool and two warm colors. Unlike complementary color, split complementary schemes, they're more balanced and they're easier on the eyes. Usually you want the color at the top of the triangle to be the main color. The two secondary colors are going to work as highlights and accent colors. So here we have a cartoon girl and I started off by deciding that her hair was going to be the main dominant color. So chose the yellow for the hair and now coming up here to our color panel, 
with harmony selected then we're going to go ahead and move over to split complementary and you can see procreate automatically chooses those secondary colors for us so we've got the blue here and then also the violet so use the blue for the background and the eyes and then the violet for the shirt and the hair bands with this option we have the warm color as our base so the warm color of the hair is our base and that's always like i said at the tip of the triangle and then the two cool colors are our secondary colors and those are on the opposite ends of that triangle so if we choose a cool color for our hair like this violet we now have two warm colors as our complementary colors right here our cool color is at the tip of the triangle and now our warm colors are the secondary colors here and pulling up the previous one you can see how just making that change really affects the overall feel of the exact same drawing the split complementary is the same scheme I used for my logo. And designing this, I knew I wanted the text to consist of two warm colors. So in order for that to happen, I needed to choose a cool color for my main dominant color. Even though this really isn't the dominant color in this design, it was what gave me those two warm colors. So selecting the blue here then, shows those two warm colors there on the ends of the triangle. Even though the blue is at the top of the triangle, the words still act like the main focal point because of the warm color temperature. So like we talked about before, that warm color temperature brings that to the foreground, the blue kind of fades to the background. Next up, we have analogous. So this scheme uses one base color and two secondary colors, just like split complementary. The base color is usually used as the main shade in the artwork, just like split complementary. But the main difference here is that the three colors are positioned closer together, which makes this color scheme either all warm or all cool based on that initial color that you choose. With this color scheme, you don't have any contrasting colors or colors competing for attention, which gives you a more uniform and clean result. So for an example of this, let's take a look at that banana illustration that I did. The banana is the main color, which gives us a yellow for a base. So let's select that. And then coming up here to our color panel, once again, harmony down here. We're gonna change this over to analogous. And you'll see the main color here being the yellow banana. And then we have our secondary colors here being the green and that orange, which finishes out the design. You can see how color harmony works so well by comparing this to the what not to do example I showed you at the beginning of the video. Exact same illustration. One works, one looks like absolute trash. Another thing here to keep in mind with the analogous, you can also add extra tints and shades and tones of each of your three main colors to kind of add in a little extra spice if you need more variety. So turning this on and off, you can kind of see here how I changed the leaves here and then the extra line here in the background. So just a little bit more variety playing off that same color scheme. The triadic color scheme is next. This also plays off the split complementary color scheme, but instead of a triangle with a sharp point, it puts equal distance between all three colors. The result here is a trio of colors that are equally dominant and it gives you a vibrant and punchy result. To use a triadic scheme successfully, the colors should be carefully balanced. You're gonna wanna let one color dominate and then use the two other colors for accents. To explain this, let's go ahead and take a look at this anchor design. So I use triadic color schemes a lot in designs like this, where I want just a strong graphic punch. It's fun, it's vibrant, and it screams for attention. So as you can see here, blue is my main color. That was my jumping off point. That's my dominant color. So if we select that, we come up here once again to our color panel, harmony selected. Let's switch over to triadic. You can see now we have that equilateral triangle here, all the colors equidistant apart from each other. We've got the greens and the pinks, which I used to work as the accent colors here. And then I kind of leveraged out the rest of the design by alternating the colors of all three and the stars here down at the bottom. 
So once again, I used this design at the beginning of the video to show you how different the same design can look just by making different color choices. So now that you've learned more, compare these two again with the one we have here, the finished good design, and then our absolute trash design. So as you learn more throughout this video, are you starting to understand why this works and why this doesn't and why color choice is so important? I hope so. Finally, we have tetradic. Like the triadic scheme, the tetradic places equal distance between all the colors chosen, but this time with four colors instead of three. The results are gonna be vibrant, they're gonna be colorful, and can honestly be pretty chaotic at times. These colors can be really aggressive and in your face. This is gonna give you no clear dominance of one color over another, especially if you use them all equally. So you're definitely gonna to want to be pretty careful using this one. So here's a couple of examples of how I incorporate this into my work. I love Tetradic for doodle compositions like this. Since there's so many individual characters here, I don't want one to overshadow another, but I don't want them to blend together either. So a Tetradic color scheme gives me enough colors to work with in order to make sure the characters are separated from left to right and top to bottom, while also giving each one kind of the equal importance in the design. There's no real dominant color. So I started out with just the pink on this and then pulling up my color panel here again, harmony selected and moving this over to Tetradic. You can see then we have the Tetradic rectangle there with all the different colors selected. Each one represented equally here in the design. It just balances each other out. And like I said, one's not more dominant than the other. It just all kind of ties it together. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another way to use that exact same tetradic color scheme. With this same exact colors as the doodle composition, all the colors are equidistant apart from each other on the color wheel. So no real dominant color, so to speak. But in this case, the yellow does appear to have more dominance in the design just because the size of that main character is so much larger compared to the rest of the background. We still get a super fun and punchy color scheme without it being too busy or too distracting. So that's color theory in a nutshell, but here's one thing to remember. There's no one correct answer, one correct way to color your artwork. You could have a handful of approaches that work for any given design, but there's always gonna be thousands of wrong choices. Learning color theory and being able to use that knowledge to identify what works and what doesn't work is the key to making the right decisions for your illustrations. So what did you think? Did you learn something new? Did you get some valuable information that you can apply to your own artwork? If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. And if you know of a friend that might get some help from this too, feel free to share it. By the way, this video is the first in a new series here on my channel because there's so much more to art than learning just how to draw. There's more things to understand like color theory and composition, design elements, layout, how to use text correctly. Basically all the things that go together to make your designs look better. That's all coming soon. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post those new videos. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep creating.